high five. Yeah. Let's show some quad building mm. exercise. I love high, high fives. Five. Yeah. So yeah. weird. You, like, yeah. you just held it out there for me. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's talk about quads. Um, I have a combo exercise, uh, uh, a combination of exercises that really hits the quads in a gnarly way. Ridiculous quad pump, gets them very sore. And I start with an isolation movement um, uh, that I like to consider, that I consider superior, far superior to leg extensions. It's the sissy squat, one of my favorites. So we're going to start with sissy squats, and then I'm going to transition to a new movement, but we'll, first I'll demonstrate this one. So with the sissy squat, <clears throat> you want to stand up on the balls of your feet. You don't want to be way up real tall. You want to kind of have the heels hover off the floor a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my hips forward, so I'm not going to bend at the hips. I'm only bending at the knees, bring my body down as I lean back, and then straighten my legs back out. This is a quad isolation Keep movement. Keep doing that, I wanna put some, so the, here's the big thing right here where his hips are. Naturally, people are gonna break at the hips and wanna stick their butt out. Mm. What he's doing right now, and you can't see it, he's squeezing his butt and he's pressing his pelvis up and forward while he's doing that. So that's what, main, what maintains that neutral pelvis. Yeah, you don't, you're not doing this, right? I'm here. Um, so after doing this exercise, I immediately go to a front squat, and I guess I'll do it in this direction so it's a little bit better to look at. I like to use a cross grip. This is just your traditional front squat. Stand up nice and tall, feet about shoulder width, and you wanna keep the elbows up high, sit back, come down nice and low, and then come right back up. The front squat places more emphasis on the quads than a back squat does. So that's the two exercises. Front, go right sissy squat, right to front squat, and uh, see how you feel after that. Yeah. What you got? Wow, so I think we're doing, I'm glad you went this way. I'm curious where Justin goes because we're going to do all the controversial Nobody stuff. Knows. I yeah. see. Um, I, I want to do an advanced move. So Sal's move with the sissy squat, there's going to be many people, especially on the YouTube channel that are trolls, they're going to come around and they're going to see that and be like, oh my God, you can't do that. Your knees, oh, that'd yeah. be so bad for you. Wasn't that in Michael Jackson's uh, Smooth Criminal? <laughs> <laughs> so and that's not true whatsoever. And if, you, if some of these movements that we're teaching right now, you may not have the mobility to do that yet. So this isn't necessarily for everybody. Uh, this, these are advanced techniques that we're giving tips on things that we've done to help uh, put emphasis on a certain muscle group that we're trying to develop. In this case, it's the quads. These are some great things that have helped develop my quads over the years. I know that what Sal just taught, that was been a, that's been a money maker for me also, and I'm sure Justin will have something great. But I just wanna put emphasis on that. What we're teaching right now uh, is not necessarily for everybody, and you first need to get to the point where you can do these exercises in a controlled manner through full range of motion uh, with good posture uh, and maintaining that the entire time first before you start to do that, because what I'm about to teach is very controversial. Uh, I'm gonna do a, a really, really narrow stance squat, and uh, the reason why I'm gonna do a really narrow stance squat is well, you'll see when I get down and all the way down, it really shifts all the emphasis and the weight over the top and onto my quads where I'm holding the weight as I come up. So a lot of quad development, very little of the glutes in comparison to a standard squat. So like Sal, I'm gonna come in from behind. I'll step out here front for you, Doug. I'm gonna get into that, the bar, into my squat position. I'm gonna pick it up. Make sure those shoulders are peeled back. I'm gonna take a super narrow stance. So then everybody's gonna be different on, based on your ankle mobility. This takes a lot of ankle mobility, a lot of hip mobility. When I come down in this, I'm gonna choose a weight that's pretty light so I can really control this. I'm really gonna control as I come down, nice and slow and controlled. Keep balance all the way down, nice and deep. Come right back up out of that. Yeah, it's a lot of knee extension and flexion. Excellent. Yeah, and this is where we're kind of getting into exploratory realms, and that's definitely something to can good to do, but probably not for you know our beginner crowd. No. Um, this is probably not as controversial as any of those two. I mean, I think I've seen most in shape magazines or you know things that uh, the grocery store kind of highlight the the fact that plyometric type exercises help to kind of build and develop muscles in a specific way, and that's just because of the explosive component to them and oh, getting okay. that, that neuromuscular response at a, at a higher level. So for me, to just get more of a, a response out of my quads, I tend to do just a more of a controlled lunge jump. So, um, and, and to be honest, I prefer doing it with just one leg at a time. That way, now I'm, you're not switching. I'm not switching in between yeah. both because that way I can really control 
um, you know, the response that I'm getting out of that leg and then drop into position and stabilize each time. So. Well, that's a good point because if you, the difference between you alternating back and forth versus one side, you, when you start alternating, it becomes more of a coordination thing where we're trying to get the most out of your quads right, right here. So it, exactly. the focus and emphasis becomes more. So that and makes this is how sense. I feel about most plyometric exercises in general. Like you want to really take time between each rep and really get refocused and, and be able to build up as loud of a signal as you possibly can in order to get it to respond because that's what the goal is. So as I'm driving it down, sometimes I like to use my arms a lot of times. That way I kind of get more athletic with it, something I would do running uh, or just, you know, getting connectivity with the upper body as well. So I'm going to come up, up and then back down and drop into it. So now, now you land with control. You're not, land with you're control. not bashing your knee into the floor. Well, and, note, and notice it, it, between each rep how much time he takes. He takes no, enough time to reset himself, get reestablished, balance, and then explodes up out of it again. <clears throat> and of like course, uh, this is an explosive movement, so you shouldn't do it to fatigue. Right. Uh, you should do a few reps that you can fire real hard. When you start to fatigue, you stop. Take a break and then repeat. I love that you taught that because yes. you see that exercise done so often. Everybody's doing it to fatigue. And they're, they're alternating like and they're just, exactly. It, yeah. become, it reminds me of people that do all these plyometric exercises that are going to fatigue. It then just becomes cardio. It's not that much, if you, that's all you're doing is for repetitions and for time. And you're, you're not really focusing on the emphasis of the movement and what you're trying to do, which is to cr create this in, intrinsic force exploding out. If you're not really doing it like that, then you're really not getting the real benefits of the movement, and you're really just doing a different way of doing cardio. So it's not much better mm -hmm. than jumping rope in that case. 